Hello everyone, welcome to another week's episode of Reconnect the Dots, brought to you by Abdraman. Once again, I want to empower and help you to become the best fashion of yourself through this podcast, and I hope it benefits you. So take a listen to this week's episode and let me know what you think. Hi everyone, welcome to Reconnecting the Dots um, podcast with Abdurrahman. This is episode 6 of the first season of Self-Improvement. And today I have with me on the show a a wonderful and uh, a young black Muslim lady who is, uh, who is actually wearing a whole lot of hats. Honestly, uh, if I, 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 I'm actually going to give a brief, a brief, you know, um, synopsis about her she's really done a lot for herself and she's also an inspiration to other people around her and her peers as well historically she has a bachelor's degree in economics and finance from william baptist university and uh, during our time she's earned extensive athletic achievement as well including seven all american awards and the 2019 national championship title she has also sprouted a love for helping others build generational wealth and took those same values of discipline and focused the financial service industry. Her name is Jathia, Jathia Isaac Thomas. Uh, she also currently works as a representative for a local mortgage firm, and she continues to help friends and family build their investment plans. And um, in her spare time, she likes to volunteer. And she had actually volunteer, uh, she currently volunteers as a local wrestling club to give back to her community. Uh, and they also, um, she has opened her home photograph business to express her passion for nature and travel as well. She manages all these responsibilities, which is something that actually um, uh, she's going to be talking about in, in the course of this show and the podcast. Uh, please let me welcome Jatia Isaac Thomas. Hi, Jatia. How are you? Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Hi, I'm well, doing well. How are thanks. you? I'm very good, very good. Thank you for coming on the show, and uh, it's really good to actually have you on the show. I'm, I'm so happy. It's been a very, um, you know, busy, you know, timing and all that to actually get you on the show. But hey, uh, it's good to have you. So tell me, um, Jathi, I, I know you a lot. I, I know you're very, you have been a very um, wonderful and inspiration to a whole lot of people. And um, um, can you briefly tell us about you and? Um, how has your career journey been so far? Sure, sure. Um, and so thank you so much for the introduction. I appreciate it. Um, and, and kind of touching on those important points on my journey through life so far. Um, like you said, I'm very young. <laughs> right. And I have a lot, a lot of ways to go. So I'm, I'm very excited for what's to come. But um, I, I come from very humble backgrounds. My mom is from Nigeria, my dad is from New York, and so I got a very interesting look out on life um, growing up. And and I mean, I can remember so many different instances with my family, um, and and watching my mother be an entrepreneur and my dad work to support everyone. I mean, just understanding how finances worked in the household growing up was an important important part of why I decided to jump into financial services. Um, and so I have my degree in economics and finance, like you said, and um, I had an amazing, amazing time uh, coming up through school as an athlete. Um, it's a little out there, it's a little out there, most people say, but I was a women <laughs> wrestler. Um, I love self-defense, I love being able to compete um, in high school, I did so much. I can remember being on the dance team, captain of the step team, a part of the SAT club, and just social, just trying to learn uh, what was out there and what I would fall in love with. And wrestling was for sure the one that stuck out to me the most. Sure. Um, it, it turned out to be the opportunity that earned me in a scholarship uh, to go to school and pay for most of my schooling all, all through the way. And so um, I went to Wayland Baptist University. Um, a small school out in the middle of West Texas. Uh, however, the experience was 
irreplaceable irreplaceable and i'm sure you know um, oh, yeah. just your own your own college experience and your own experience in life Absolutely. college is definitely definitely a different um vibe and and for me it was somewhere where i got to express my athletic passions too um interesting yes sir That's... um and so oh go ahead no no go on go on go on i was just i was just trying to just um you know um see how interesting what you're saying is so just go on. yeah sure and so um athletically at wayland i had the opportunity to compete on the team um, like you said, a seven-time All-American, 2019 WCWA National Champion, um, and or, I'm sorry, NAIA. And so having those opportunities there to compete at a higher level, to train at the Olympic Training Center for a period of time, to meet people that are Olympic-level athletes, to be in that circle of excellence, it was um, an exhilarating experience. It's something that I, I pull from and I learn from. Um, I always say that I'm not, I'm not the, the most I try not to be the smartest and the most brilliant person in the room. Um, I feel like the people I surround myself with are should be motivating, should be inspiring, should be people that um, make me want to push myself. Um, and so training at the Olympic Training Center and being in a room full of people who are mentally motivated to achieve their own goals was a huge, huge part of my journey. Um, have you so ever beautiful. experienced something like that? Oh yeah, I mean, you know, um, I, I I have, and um, honestly, I I, I want to say that your what you've just said right now is actually really very interesting and very very impressive. Well, for me, you know, when I was in college, I um, I was just very. I mean, a lot of people call me a nerd because I was I was very very focused minded on you know what purpose of why I was in college and why I've gone to school because at every point in time. I, I draw inspiration and motivation from right and left, you know, of my family members. Because again, in my own family, I have a whole lot of engineers, I have doctors and, and, and all that. And again, there, there, was, there was something for me when I was in college, I mean, for me growing up, I mean, my, my, it, was, it, was, it was a long time ago. But again, those, those inspiration at, at, as, of that, as of that time, for mm -hmm. me, I... I was this person who was actually ready to challenge his worldview. And not just want to challenge my worldview at a time, I also want to, um, I, had a, I had a plan to actually explore traveling as a means of education to actually gain knowledge, experience, expertise in different areas to actually help, you know, strengthen my, my skill set and a whole lot of, I mean, again, as a young person back in the days, I'm still young. I'm still young. Don't get me wrong. And um, I, it was it was a whole lot of things. I, even though I, I didn't have well, I didn't have the time for sports. I didn't really participate in sports activities. But I was actually part of a a large a a, a, um, a very large student run organization, which is actually you know um, very popular in 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 the world. Apparently the it's called ISEC. I was part of ISEC. So ISEC, through ISEC, I was, able, I was able to do a whole lot of things. Okay. So, um, so, so yeah, I mean, so for me, it was, it was, it was, it was a whole lot of different things, honestly. And, but trust me, of course, I had some motivation support system. I draw inspiration from right and left, which actually helped shift, you know, my journey thus far. Again, again. So I haven't said all the things you've just said now. You know, there's actually something that really struck me, and those are the, the the things that really struck me on on what you just said. Like number one is the foundation, the foundation of you know your your family, where you're coming from, and mm -hmm. and and you mentioned about drawing the most you know uh, brilliant um, inspiration from your parents, especially your mom, who happens mm -hmm. to be. A very, a very strong, a very strong black woman who is, you know, an entrepreneur. She has all the energy and all that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, 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 tell me how how has this this pathway, you know, of course, which is, which is, you know, uh, you know, you're you're looking at success definitely, right? And how mm -hmm. has this pathway, being a young black Muslim, how has it shaped your identity? as a black Muslim woman in the United States. Man, that's an amazing question. That's a strong question. 
um, watching my mom come up as an entrepreneur, as someone who's always pushing herself, who always has, you know, uh, multiple sources of income, who always makes sure that everybody's okay, um, regardless of what she does. And I mean, you met my mama. She is. <laughs> oh she yes. Is a, <laughs> she is a strong, bold woman, and coming from that kind of background has made me in turn become a strong, bold woman because I, I mean, that's my mother. Um, some, some of the things, qualities you have come from your parents. And so right. um, as a Muslima, um, sometimes it's, it's stereotypical for us to stay quiet or for us to be more reserved or um, only operate in a certain circle. And, and coming from a strong, bold mother, um, that's something in me that, that helped me build that confidence that um, I can be black I can be a woman, I can be proud, and I can be successful. Um, and, I, and I don't have to choose between those qualities. And so um, just coming from, you know, the humble beginnings that I come from and the, the home with um, just mental support and being able to observe success in the making is, is brought me to where I am now as a Muslim. Hmm. Interesting. So, so, so tell me, would you, would you say that, would you say that this is actually you know, um, um, a purpose which perhaps you have you have dreamt of, or at a point in time, did you ever feel? Did you ever feel like, you know, um, at any point in time, did you ever feel like, you know, dropping out of that journey to becoming successful as a young Muslim, or what was what what has been what has been your challenging time? And how did you? Oh, yes. How did you conquer <laughs> this, this period? Because trust me, I know I know it's not easy. Number one, especially you know, as a black woman, as a, mm -hmm. as a, a, a young black woman, you know, um, you know, looking looking forward to becoming an astonishing, um, you know, um, a career person in a mm -hmm. respected portfolio and all that. It, mm -hmm. it also comes with its own. Um, different, you know, challenges as, I mean, sweet, sweet and bitter, sweet and bitter experience, pretty much to say. So, so tell me, what has been that, you know, greatest challenging moment, you know, and how were you able to, you know, sell through, you know, can, can you share yeah. that with me as well? Can you share that with the listeners as yes. well? Yes, yes, sir. Um, and that's, that's a great question because I feel like in life, it, you have ups and downs, it fluctuates. So you're not going to have just one challenging moment. There are going to be a lot of things that are thrown at you left and right that may make you want to buckle. Um, but I would have to say that my biggest, most challenging moment was um, when I had shoulder surgery. I tore my right labral. Um, it was torn from the back all the way to the front. There was a slim string holding my arm in place. Um, separating my bones and wow. so my my arm had come out of the socket a few times wow. in competing but um, it was something that you know you just brush off and move on you're you're going for something you're pushing yourself you're not exactly worried about um, taking care of your body but there did come a point where I, I had to think about it and it was like whoa you know um, I get that you want to be as successful as you possibly can, but if you don't get this taken care of, it's something that could potentially sacrifice your future, right, right? you know? And so deciding to go ahead and get surgery was hard for me. That was a challenge. That was hard. But once I got the surgery um, and going through rehab, that process made me very, very hungry for success when I got back. Um, and wow. so I went through my freshman year um, and I did an All-American and my sophomore year where I believe I got, um, uh, I, I don't even remember the place. I think I got fifth at nationals and I All-American okay. in a few different events. And my junior year um, where I got injured. And so I did not wrestle. I was out for the entire year. And then my senior year, coming from that fifth place to right. national champion. Right. And so I had a gap. There was a gap there. There mm. was an entire year where I did not compete. Wow. And so where, how do you keep that 
mental strength? How do you keep that stamina? How do you not only stay motivated, but push yourself past the point to become better than you were when you left? And so those are some of the questions. Those are some of the motivations that I had to have. And to push myself at that level, to come from not being on the mat, um, to not operating, to literally being at zero, to run to a hundred is, I mean, I can't imagine anything more challenging than that. <laughs> wow, for real, oh yeah. This is, this is really astonishing. So pretty much you, 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 you continue to push yourself regardless of whatever pain you feel, you continue to push yourself and to continue to, you know, um, train your mental resilience to focus it on the goal, the end goal for you. That is really mm -hmm. interesting. I mean, not a lot of, you know, young folks out there, you know, I mean, a lot of people probably would have, you know, just given up or just thought, well, you know, I, I can't make this happen. And, 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 and honestly, I, I don't blame them. It's, 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 not, it's not their fault or anything like that, but the truth, but the truth is, like, I, I always say something every day. I, 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 I and these are, these are some of the things I always used to, uh, also motivate myself. Whether you're young, you're old. Honestly, we need some some type of you know um, strength to actually carry on, regardless of whatever anything we do. So, and I think I've I've been very very particular about this this um, statement every now and then. Now, too, I always say that for you to actually accomplish that goal or that dream you want to um, achieve. It's all about being able to train your mind to sadden. And which is what you've just said to me. I'm I'm actually just, you know, putting it that you were, uh, because you understand the need and you know that, you know, for you to actually capture or to satisfy your need, you need to roar and, you know, consume yourself with that push and motivation to make it happen. Mm -hmm. which is actually not easy so i always say that train your mind to serve you that is the most important thing honestly and again so so i haven't i haven't said you know all of, all of this now how do you then how do you then balance how do you then balance your career and then you know um or and then being a muslim at the same time because of course what I'm just trying to say is, as a Muslim or as anyone who is probably a young black Muslim or or anyone who's actually doing well in his or career and all that, mm -hmm. you know, there's they, one thing that actually, you know, uh, makes us um, um, continue to exist as a human being, right? So mm -hmm. how, how do you balance your, your work life, your career life, and then, mm -hmm. you know, that, that thing, that creator, okay, that actually helps you to um, make a whole lot of things because I'm sure that all of these things, all of the success you have come to achieve thus far, um, mm -hmm. would you say it is it is you? It is because you pushed yourself, or I want you to I want you to speak to that, you know. So so at least maybe listeners out there can probably just you know um, have a different perspective as to. Um, it's not just about success alone, but it's all about being able to also put God first in everything you do. Yes, yes, I'm blessed. I am blessed, woo! I, <laughs> and I'm very, I'm so happy you asked that question because personal development is something that I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. I am blessed and there are various things that I do um, and lessons that I've gained throughout the years to allow me to have not only career success but life success to feel content to feel happy right. um and it's not something that's 100 percent constant right life right. just doesn't go in a straight path there's going to be twists and turns and Absolutely. ups and downs but Absolutely. there are consistent practices that you can have to maintain a certain level 
um and and those practices man it's it's making me so happy to even have the opportunity to be here and to be sharing this with you because right. these are things that have changed my life like <laughs> <laughs> i can remember the first moment i even started doing these things and and just the shift that it's had um mm-hmm. and even and even now i'm still growing and i'm still learning but um i'm i'm really excited i'm really happy you asked me that question right. um and so uh, i really want the listeners here to focus to kind of listen in to to hear me out when i speak about these things because these are things that not only did they affect my life but they've had a proven record um and i'm i'm sure you can attest this they've had a proven record of affecting other people's lives as well right. so That's if everybody right. could just um listen to me here and and we'll go over a few different ways and this may not be everything but a few different ways you can begin your personal development journey um something that i personally had to pick up when when competing and when going through things and going through different challenges and in college and outside of college is affirmations um mm-hmm. being able to sit down and to affirm to myself um different things in my life i remember even even when i'm wrestling even when i'm working out um right before every rep i'm strong i'm grateful i'm powerful it could be i'm blessed i'm i'm ready to start the day speaking positively positive self talk um and so affirmations positive self talk another thing that was monumental um is visualization and so that's mm-hmm. when you close your eyes and you imagine and you envision the success you're looking for so exactly. you're slowing down and and these are things that mashallah these are things that are already ingrained in our religion right, right. through prayer right. and and I'll I'll jump to that in a little bit but I want to make sure these basic concepts are understood and then and then I'll tie it back to to how that's already ingrained in Islam right. um mm-hmm. and so visualization being able to close your eyes and already envision um what you want to accomplish so for me that was the night before or a few nights before consistently closing my eyes for 10 15 minutes and seeing myself grab the leg seeing myself um pinning someone seeing myself getting in those opportune position or when the moment arises seeing myself shooting in like lightning right um mm-hmm. this could be for someone closing their eyes and seeing themselves walk into their first day at a job if you're looking for a job it, it could be closing your eyes and getting that yes from a potential employer it could be closing your eyes and and you know envisioning that new car that you want understanding what it will smell like when you first sit in it what kind of seats right. you want the leather how it will feel running under your hands i mean just just things like just sitting back and visualizing um and imagination itself is something that a lot of us have gotten so far away from but it's man it's it's something that I'm I'm so happy to have been blessed to have. Right. Um and so just just those few things affirmations, positive self-talk, visualization and focusing on different qualities. Um and so whether that be discipline, you want to spend a week just focusing on discipline or consistency or accountability or I mean it, it I mean you can go down the list um and and just man i <laughs> there's I know. so much that i, I know so it's a, it's a whole way. hey it's a whole lot i know honestly it's, it's a lot but i know i, I, I know and so vis- and visioning too. yeah i i know honestly it's it's a whole lot i mean like again like you know so i i i just also want to just you know um you know reiterate and reemphasize on something you mentioned you, t- you talked about envisioning envisioning yourself you know being successful and you know um visualization right and and you also need to um you know picture yourself in the in the reality of you being able to come and you know achieve all of those things you want to um you know um uh, actualize and I, see all of those things and i believe that it, it's it's all about being able to have a dream mm-hmm. and having your goals on how you want to accomplish those those dreams right so um so just here tell me what would you what would you tell that young black woman how that who is um struggling between you know a purpose okay and between our goals or the dreams 
she has, you know, with respect to, you know, the exact person she want to become. So what, what would you, what advice, how would you advise and, and what, what are the things what, what advice? How would you advise that kind of that you know the, the, that that young black woman out there who is struggling and you know trying to trying to make things happen for herself? And mm-hmm. the reason I'm actually asking this question, I've had an opportunity to work with with the the youth population before, and I know what the youth population go through. It's not really easy for them out there, honestly, and it is it is very inspiring. When I see a, a young black woman or any young person, whether black, white or anything, you know, doing something really, you know, interesting and, you know, um, astonishing, because this will really, you know, inspire all those people, other people to actually do more, right? So I just wanted to speak to that, you know, young, you know, um, female Muslim out there we struggling, you know, and how do you, I want you to speak to them as to uh, advising them on how best they can actually, you know, journey, you know, in their career path to become successful. Man, that's a, that's a great question. Um, and so I want to make sure I understand you properly. Right. You're asking me, what would I tell my younger self or what would I tell someone who is striving to start their journey of figuring out where they want to go and 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 who they want to be? What's the advice I have for them? Is that absolutely, correct? absolutely, that's correct. Um, man, so this question is a deep one because there's so many people struggling with it, and I don't believe it's just the youth. I believe that there are people at all ages and stages of life that are asking themselves this question, who am I? Hmm. You know? Um, And the advice I would have for someone who's in the position of figuring out their identity is asking themselves what does the best version of themselves look like? If they were going to be the most awesomest, coolest, most amazing, most talented, most professional, most, if you were going to be the most that you could possibly be, possibly dare to be, what would that look like? What would your daily schedule look like? And once you understand how you want your daily schedule to be the best version of you, your most happiest version, the version that makes you content, the version that makes you feel closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the version that mm-hmm. that makes you happy to wake up in the morning, right? Right. What would what would that version of you be? What would it look like? Um, what would that schedule look like? What would you want to do during the day? Um, and once you have that most perfect version of you, um, then you can start to work backwards. Because right. I feel like a lot of people um, sometimes we get so busy with life that we miss the fact that there's an there's an end goal um and it's 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 not a what it's not a material substance it's an inner peace that we're all striving for absolutely um and so taking it from the outside and and really understanding what's inside and that's where spirituality that's where prayer that's where spending time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's where spending time with yourself comes in um and so that would be the advice i have is is what does that look like right and that answer is going to be different for everyone some people may want to you know some people may want to um anything some people may want to work in the office some people may be well i work better with my hands i want to do that some people may be well my ideal day would be spending the first three hours with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala some people right. may you know so then maybe they'll open up a mosque or maybe they'll be an accountant or a lawyer and maybe the other person will be a nurse or or i mean it, it doesn't to me the job how you add value to the people in the world around you doesn't really matter what matters is how you feel when you do it, your inner peace. Right. Um, and so 
uh, that would be the advice that I have is, and that and to always keep Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala close. Um, that's something that I've noticed and I'm still young and I'm still learning and growing, but I've noticed that the closer and um, the closer and the stronger the bond I have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh -huh. the more confident and the more um, assured of myself I feel operating in the world. And that's contagious. Awesome. Um, energy is for sure contagious. So that would be the advice I have. Awesome, awesome. That that's that's really that's really great. Honestly, I was uh, I was you, you just you just speak to 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 my, to my mind. Honestly, I mean, like every day. So um, I, I I always think about this thing. So I mean, listeners out there, whether you're young, you're old, it doesn't matter. Anything and everything at all you want to do, always put God first. God matters first, he is first, he should be first in everything you do. And then every other thing you want to do comes secondary. And then you plan yourself, you set goals, you dream big. And um, even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do what is best in the ability I've given to you and leave the rest to me. So it means putting effort in everything you do, focus on the outcome. Don't, don't worry about things you don't um, necessarily have control over but rather focus on the things you have control over you know mm. so uh, i mean that was that was that was very very um inspiring yeah, and, I, and you you really need it there so again because i know a lot of people have different things that bothers them that you know really um um frustrate them and all mm -hmm. so i just I just wanted you to, you know, really, you know, talk about that and, you know, so at least, you know, whoever, I mean, I mean, there are so many people out there who might be going through different things and mm -hmm. at least when they hear or listen to, you know, you know, those few advices or uh, statements, you know, maybe perhaps you never know, it will, it will you know, motivate or re-energize re their mind to want to do better and become the better, best version of themselves. So tell me, Jethia, why wrestling? out of all those sports and activities you know which i know you started back in college why wrestling yeah um i i i think that would be best answered with um i think that would be best answered with what wrestling does for me okay wrestling <laughs> to me wrestling gives me a choice right okay um, I joined the team because I saw my older brother join the team. Um, and at okay. the time I was, I'll be honest with you, I'm gonna put all of it out there. At the time I was fighting a lot. I would get in random fights and, and fist fights, like fist fights with people. Like I was fighting a lot. I was, I'm sure my mom will tell you all the trouble I gave her. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh yeah, she does. Yeah, she told I'm me. I'm sure she has stories, but I was fighting a lot and so I saw wrestling as a way I could fight and not get in trouble. <laughs> um, and, and that transformed into a way that I could learn to control myself and have control over my body. And once I felt like I had control of myself um, and the things that I did, wrestling then gave me a choice. Um, and that's right. what, it's, it's crazy, that's what discipline is. Discipline is controlling yourself, being able to direct your your body, being able to direct your mind to go past those natural obstacles and distractions. And so literally wrestling gave me discipline. Um, and through that, discipline gave me freedom. It gave hmm. me choice. And that's that's what self-defense does for me. Right. And when I that's what I want to do for other people. I want to give people a choice. Um, and so that's why I chose nice. financial services. That's why I became a financial advisor because I want to allow everyone to have the opportunity to build generational wealth. That's why I sat down and I studied and I got the licenses that I have. That's why I learn about the real estate industry and, and what that does and how people can start to build those generational things so that you know, we're not starting over from scratch every generation. We're, we, we have some things set up for us. And so um, I wanna give people a choice. And that's, that's something that I was blessed to have in my life. And that's something that I hope I, I have the uh, opportunity to radiate to others. That's beautiful. 
that is very beautiful there. Allison, that is really, really beautiful. That is really, really beautiful. So uh, tell, tell, <laughs> me, tell me something. Tell me something. How, how, um, so when you, when you tell me, you, you know, you just mentioned about, you, you said something now, you said discipline gave you a choice, right? Mm-hmm. And as a, as a financial advisor, how, how are you, how are you, how have you been able to, um, um, advise or pretty much help those who actually, you know, I need to actually, um, you know, really acknowledge, I'm sorry, or maybe like, you know, acquire or helping them to build some knowledge and all that. How have you been able to do that? And like, when did you, when did you start that? Yeah, so, um, uh, and this is another tidbit of uh, advice I would give someone who's going through college, who's maybe at the later stages, is talk to your advisors, talk to your dean, talk to your chancellors, talk to the people that spend the most time with you on a professional level. Um, Because I had an advisor who saw the potential in me, um, and I talked to him. I, I had a close relationship with my professor. I talked to him about, you know, some of the, my ideas, my professional ideas, what what I wanted to be after college. And when we sat down and had that conversation, we got to narrow some things down. Your advisors, your professors, after high school, they're there specifically to watch you succeed, to help right. you get to wherever it is you want to be, right? They're not just there to give you homework and give you tests. They're there because they would like to impact people's lives and I was blessed to have an advisor that impacted my life Um, and so I sat down with him and and we narrowed down the field to a financial analyst or a financial advisor and the financial analyst would be more behind a desk Um, I wouldn't talk to as many people but I would have the um, technical knowledge right Right. Um, and and both ways I'd have some technical knowledge but financial advisor means I can talk to people and I'm not sure if you've gathered so far, <laughs> but I love talking to people. <laughs> that, that's good. That, that's that's really interesting, honestly. I mean, I, I mean, I, I see you. You've been able to, you've been able to align your goals, your dream, you know, in in into into one box of you know what really makes you happy, as uh, as you know as as relates to um, uh, your interest you know in in an in a particular industry and that that that's really good that's really good i mean you've been able to align everything together your dream your passion and at the same time you're also able to you know help people to make you know that choice and to help people build you know a generation of wealth which is really good that that that's really very interesting and um i i really i really like that so so um if so have you so do you not have a real estate um company or what exactly so do you help people to um um buy a house what, what exactly just yeah just talk yes. so, you know. um i transitioned from financial advising into more of a mortgage space um, I did that because as an advisor, I was working with people and I noticed that one of their biggest expenses was a mortgage. Right. Um, and even me and my husband, I noticed that one of the next moves we want to make is to buy a house. And so just kind of seeing how at all levels of life, real estate is something that everybody deals with, right? right. Everybody right. wants to have a roof over their head and Absolutely. everybody's willing to pay a pretty penny for a roof over their head. <laughs> so yeah, that's know. something that when I become interested in something, and this is another powerful tip, is I learn, I read, I study, I research. I had to become a person who fell in love with learning. So you can ask, I mean, anyone who's close to me, I don't watch a lot of TV. I read a lot nah. of books. I read a lot of books. Um, I mean, I could name a dozen books off the top of my head that have had monumental shifts in my life. But I know we don't have a whole lot of time. <laughs> I know, I know, no, no, honestly, I know where you get that from. You took that from your mom. Your mom, your mom, yes. <laughs> your mom reads a lot. And trust me, I, I remember, I mean, like, I have worked with your mom severally for many years. She's like a sister to me. And, you know, she's, she's also a very inspiring lady. 
and you know she i mean she i, I like to read as well i love to read i love doing research and um and she, honestly I, I can't count the number of times she's actually recommended so many books for me to read <laughs> yeah, so oh yeah that's gonna be good it's actually gonna be awful to you and all that so mm -hmm. honestly thank you so much Athea, for coming on this show i really do appreciate you and uh may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the wisdom of you bless the knowledge and mm -hmm. continue to um uh, make you um the coolest of your parents eyes and continue mm -hmm. to um you know bless you and bless your human and continue to increase you in faith and in iman um thank you so much and um it was this these are really encouraging words and viewers out there listeners out there jathia is a young black muslim fan as a matter of fact she's married jathia, <laughs> how old are you now again <laughs> i'm 22. what <laughs> okay, okay okay anyway yes. I, I have a lot jathia is 22. she's a financial advisor apparently she's also transitioned into you know a real estate uh um uh um Guru. mortgage mortgage industry okay, <laughs> mortgage administration Th thank you for that mortgage administration thank you so much Athea, for coming on the show and thank i would you. love to have you back on the show for more episodes uh, because again like i told you this is that there's going to be a lot more episodes on these as well which perhaps you know um i'm very sure i'm definitely going to bring you back on the show to actually discuss on more more stuff which will be inspirational to a lot of you know young black muslim muslima and and all that thank you so much and i and i really do appreciate your time and attention thank you thank yeah. you so much for having me and so yeah. i appreciate it yeah you're very welcome you're very welcome okay thank you all listeners and uh please follow us on instagram and you can leave a comment and share a comment on reconnecting the dots podcast at gmail.com thank you so much Jatia. It was wonderful and nice to have you again. All right. You, you too. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Right. -bye. Bye. You have just listened to the Reconnecting the Dots podcast with your host, Hebda Roman. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes or Google Play. And thank you for listening and see you all next week. Bye-bye.